Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to Skyblock 116. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, I want to introduce you to somebody special. Somebody brand new, in fact, because yeah, I spent a little bit more time with the replay mod running, but without any kind of commentary, getting myself a second villager from down here. And I really think it is time to dismantle this shelter before it does me any more harm because I'm a little bit worried for these villagers' safety. I had a little bit of trouble getting another villager to come out of here. I ended up with some skeletons, loosing arrows every which way, and one of them actually ended up shooting a creeper in the process. So I now have myself a music disc, which I never expected to find, and I also have this guy. He is another villager and does not have a profession right now. But once I release him into here, he can start socializing with our cleric friend who I've already been trading with a little bit more. Got myself a, nearly a full stack of redstone now. And I think it is time to finally get rid of this little extra spawning platform down here so that we can make room for what we're going to do in today's episode, which is mostly going to be breeding villagers and putting them to work. We need some more professions for villagers and we need to start thinking about how we are going to farm iron in this Skyblock world. Because a little bit of stuff about iron farming has changed in 1.16.2 in particular, so I think it's probably a good idea to explore some of that here in this brand new Skyblock world. But first, while the sun is up, I'm gonna try my best to get rid of some of these guys. And this skeleton has some Thorns armor, which was just a little bit scary, but I really wanna make sure that they don't end up shooting the villagers. So yeah, we'll lure the rest of the creepers over from this platform. I'll pop a torch down there to make sure nothing else spawns. And hopefully once I've backed off far enough away, we should only have the spider to worry about. There we go, Pied Piper, these guys are cross. Hopefully none of them should start to set a light. There we go. And we have one zombie who's apparently going to deliver me a potion of healing, which is actually going to be a good thing to have around if I can get that off of him. Yes, there we go. Kept it on the bridge. Uh, at this point, we can probably advance our way over here. I'll pop down another torch inside of this, and it's time to say goodbye to our little mob spawner for now. We will, of course, want to get a zombie into the iron farm if we want to have something threatening the villagers, because that's still very much part of iron production. But I think we need to make sure we don't have any more unwanted mobs down here, and we'll always be able to grab another mob out of the mob spawner over there if we need to, or just set up a temporary platform. We can get a zombie nice and easily. Zombie villagers have been a little bit difficult to come by, but I'm glad we've got ourselves two now. And with all that taken care of, it's time to set up our new villager with a new profession. And I need a new pickaxe because, wow, I am <laughs> running a little bit low on cobblestone, but I really need to get myself some tools on the go pretty quickly here. Let's grab some more sticks. I must have some sticks somewhere. If not, I'll just make a couple more and we'll make another pickaxe like so. And we're going to make this guy into a weaponsmith. Now the weaponsmith recipe just requires a stone slab, a couple of planks and a couple of sticks because we're making a grindstone which is really not going to take all that much in the way of resources. The one outlier there being the stone slab which of course you'll need to smelt some cobblestone to get hold of the stone to turn into stone slabs. But now we'll be able to turn this guy into a weaponsmith and he will be able to trade us a couple of very useful tools hopefully up to diamond level. And now the difficulty is really getting hold of enough emeralds that we can actually make this guy's trades work. Because the other thing he will trade is coal, and coal can only be gotten from wither skeletons. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to get hold of this much coal, and he won't accept charcoal as a substitute. We could always re-roll his early trades, though, just to see if he ends up giving us something a little bit less pricey. Let's try that one more time, see how we go. There we go, that's what we're talking about. An iron axe for one emerald, no enchantment, but a nice, easy trade to get us through that novice level. And once we've traded a few very, very useful iron axes, I might end up using these as weapons instead of the stone sword. And if I can spare the sweep attack, of course, there we go. We've got him through novice level and into whatever lies beyond. And now he's trading one iron ingot for emeralds, a trade which will be very useful later. And we can start buying bells off of him. Won't be all that useful to us immediately, but that will get us through the next tier of trades if we have 
a scarcity of iron. In the meantime though, we can smelt down some of these iron axes into iron nuggets and getting nine of those smelted down will of course net us enough iron for an iron ingot, which ain't all that much, but certainly a little bit extra. And we can always use some of the iron ingots that we have got from the mob spawner because I've gotten myself a couple more of those while I've been grinding for some extra resources here and there and just get clearing out the mob spawner down there anyway, which is pretty much constantly producing stuff while I'm in the vicinity. Look, I think there was actually a, a zombie villager's arm poking out of there for a second. But this is a bit of a slow and grindy process and it only really gets us a few iron nuggets, which is barely one iron ingot. It's not a particularly fast way of doing this. So I think it's probably going to be better for us to try and get an iron golem farm set up relatively quickly. To do that, we will need a few additional villagers because we don't want to sacrifice our two most useful villagers into an iron farm just to be scared by some zombies. We'll also need a third villager to act as the third one in the group because a group of three villagers is what is required to spawn an iron golem. So we're going to need to breed up some villagers and for that we'll need to make a decent handful of beds. So I'm going to craft up a few of these and we're going to lay out an area down at the bottom of the world next to the animal pens for now but we're going to move some of the villagers up here to this level in future and we need to figure out a place for them to stay. I'm also going to be building this partly out of bone blocks and this, this might seem a little bit macabre but really with the amount of bones we have I'm not going to need that much bone meal really and bone blocks are in abundant supply. All you need to do is break down the bones into bone meal which we'll probably just do manually like that and that will make you you know 21 or so bone blocks. Three stacks of bones gets you a full stack of bone blocks and that is a pretty useful way of providing a lot of blocks when you don't necessarily want to grind for wood and stuff all the time. So one of the main concerns I have setting up this villager breeder is making sure it's in an area where slimes don't spawn because once again we need to make sure that slimes are not going to interrupt this. They won't attack the villagers but they might present a bit of a problem for us. And since we didn't get any slimes spawning when we set up a temporary hostile mob spawner here I can be fairly confident that this area is going to be free of slime spawns. So I think we'll just set up a nice little area here. We can expand this as needed but we'll start out with some bone blocks which make a delightful noise now. I'm going to set up a series of fences around the outside here to make sure the villagers don't do their weird AI thing and end up wandering off the platform or pushing each other off by mistake. And then in the center over here where these bone blocks are, we're just going to lay out a bunch of beds at reasonable distance right now, but we can always uh, fill this area up with more beds if we need to. The trick is to make sure that we don't end up giving the villagers a way of getting up onto the fences around the outside, which workstation blocks of course will and beds can potentially give them something they could use to walk up one block onto the fences. So as long as the beds are one block away from the fences here, we won't really have any issues. And once night falls, these villagers will want to pathfind towards these beds so that they can get a good night's sleep and we can probably just bring their workstations to the center in here or even actually we could move the workstations now and that would mean that they pathfind towards them during the workday. There we go, yep they're coming on into the brand new breeding area and the only thing that remains, I'm making sure the cows don't get in here, the only thing that remains is lighting this place up with the torches I brought down and making sure that the two villagers here are well fed because some of the requirements for villager breeding include making sure that they have some food. So let's make sure we bring these two lovebirds birds some carrots to eat. Oh, and I come downstairs just to check on them and uh, we have another family member sleeping in the beds. I was spending a little bit more time off camera grinding for resources. I gave them a few more carrots just in case that would help them along the way and it seems like it has. So I'm going to claim one of these beds down here for myself just so I can get some sleep and we're going to trade a couple more iron ingots to our friend the weaponsmith here because that's going to get him a little bit further along this progression track and hopefully we'll start to unlock some better tools that I don't have to worry too much about smelting down some more iron axes for but at least we get the chance to trade a couple more of those it's really filling up very little of the XP bar 
at this point and buying bells or selling iron ingots is definitely going to be the way forward. I'm also completely out of rotten flesh to trade to the cleric, but that's fine because the cleric is now a master and is trading me things like ender pearls, glowstone, and even bottles of enchanting if I want them. This little lad right here though is possibly the most important thing right now. Our third villager means we have the opportunity to make an iron farm if we want to, but I'm going to spend a little bit more time making sure they breed a few more villagers. We want to be filling all of these beds, mostly so that we can play around with the professions, but also so that we have a few villagers that we can put into an iron farm where they'll be producing iron golems for the foreseeable future. And out of all of the professions, there are a few we're going to be avoiding for now. Take, for example, the fisherman, the, the barrel workstation. It could potentially be worth having a fisherman around in the fullness of time, but for now, we can't really trade any fish to them because I haven't set up a space to fish. It's something I plan to do in a future episode, but not doing any of that right now. Likewise, we could get a shepherd, but the wool trade is going to be fairly expensive given the amount of sheep that we have right now, and there are other priorities. The ones that would be really useful to me right now, but are going to have to wait until I get an iron farm on the go, are a smithing table and a blast furnace, both of which require iron. Useful though it would be to have a toolsmith and an armorer, we simply can't spare the supplies for the moment. And I think we will probably end up doing a little bit more of that once we have both an iron golem farm and a with a skeleton farm in the nether because that will allow us to get a decent amount of coal to trade with the blacksmith professions. In the meantime, now that we have a cow farm and a sugarcane farm though, we can of course make a lectern that will give us a librarian. The librarian will trade us some paper for easy emeralds and we should be able to buy a few enchanted books from them. Right now, I didn't want to go for a librarian right away because I don't have any means to apply the enchanted books to my gear until we get an anvil, but that should be solved by setting up an iron farm later in this episode anyway, so hopefully we shouldn't have too long to wait before we do that. And of course, there'll be a few other basic professions that will benefit from some of the stuff we're able to gather at this stage in the game, like a butcher, for example, who'll be able to trade us emeralds for raw beef and raw pork if we we're to spawn any pigs down here that would be kind of helpful as well we could get a leather worker to trade leather with from the cow farm and there are a few other professions which would be pretty useful to us at this stage but we want to focus on the stuff that it's difficult or near impossible to get in Skyblock in the state that we are right now. Things like better quality tools and ultimately iron. So that our lad here grows up into a librarian, I'm going to pop down a lectern over here and hopefully we should get some good trades out of him. If not, we can always re-roll the trades by breaking and replacing the lectern. I'm not saying... Oh, hello. <laughs> you were hiding another one. There we go. We've got a fourth child now, or at least a fourth villager, a second child right now. So hopefully we should end up getting a few more within the course of this episode. We can play around with their professions, but I think the next step is going to be heading up to the top of the world and setting up an iron farm. Okay, we've got some good news for you. We have a whole lot of villagers down there now, including one librarian, and you'll notice they've made a friend. We have an iron golem in their midst already, which is quite interesting. I didn't realize that the villagers would just make one on their own, but they did seem to do that quite frequently in my previous Skyblock world. So I guess they don't necessarily have to be frightened in order to produce an iron golem. It's just conducive to producing them more frequently, I guess. So now we have an iron golem right here amidst all of these jumping villagers, and we could dispose of this iron golem in the way that we always have done with having it walk over a campfire in the previous Skyblock world. But I think it's probably fairly soon going to be time to start moving some of these unemployed villagers up to an area that's going to be a more permanent iron farm. And iron farms are going to look a little bit different in this version of the game, and it looks like, yeah, they've reached capacity. You can tell from the thunderclouds above their heads that they're no longer going to be able to produce any more villagers. So we need to figure out a way of getting them further up in the world, because the way we're going to structure this iron golem farm, excuse me, mate, probably don't want to <laughs> say this within a shot of the existing iron golem, we're going to have them fall from height, just so that the villagers get the iron golem out of their vicinity as quickly as possible, and that should hopefully mean they produce iron golems more quickly. And we're going to do that by means of a soul sand bubble column elevator, thanks to the fact that we already have some soul sand that we got from the nether fortress in a previous episode. We're also going to be able to use the soul sand for one other purpose, and that is to create a soul campfire. Instead of using charcoal here, we can use soul sand and we get a soul campfire, which actually does damage 
twice as fast as a regular campfire does. Being unable to use lava right now because we only have one lava source here and one in the nether, which I'm planning on keeping in the nether for a basalt generator, a soul campfire is going to be a pretty easy way of doing large amounts of damage to any iron golems that fall in here. We used regular campfires in the previous iron farm in the previous skyblock series and it turned out pretty well, so we'll keep that up here until we need it. And in the meantime, we can get started on building a bubble elevator. And I'm going to do that using bone blocks once again because I have quite a few of them at this point. I am going to place this soul sand off to one side from the villager breeding area and we are going to have that on top of a block simply because I don't know quite how we're going to get hold of more soul sand. I don't know if wither skeletons drop it or if we're going to end up bartering with some more piglins for that. But now we should just be able to build up some bone blocks around the outside. I guess we'll probably just take out those corner blocks now and we'll build up a column up here will have a couple of fence gates in front of that to keep the water in and now that we're able to bone meal kelp to grow it we should just be able to get a single piece of kelp fill this entire column with water sources break the kelp again and the bubble column elevator will be complete we're going to come out a few blocks from this so that we can start building up the area with beds and i'll pop a torch or two up here just to make sure that we don't end up with anything spawning until we need it we'll come out a couple more blocks in this direction set up the zombie cell set up the villager cells and from there we can work on the rest of this and you might be wondering where exactly we're going to get kelp from in this skyblock map with no immediate oceans around us and the answer to that is from seagrass the author of the map has included a crafting recipe that allows seagrass to be combined in a two by two crafting interface to make a single piece of kelp a modified crafting recipe but it does allow us to get hold of kelp which is going to make this job one heck of a lot easier okay all of the bone blocks are in place i can drop a bucket of water down here and all of these flowing water sources are going to be contained there we go yet yeah, we've made it now i don't think we can plant kelp on soul sand even though the block space of soul sand has been changed slightly oh we can now that's something we couldn't do before all right and now here's something else we couldn't do before grow kelp all the way to the top of this and now once we remove that we should get that bubble column effect kicking in and that will propel us all the way to the top of here or close enough to the top of here looks like i didn't quite make it all the way to the top there no worries though we can get down by targeting the beds boing <laughs> i love being able to jump off of beds it does save you a little bit of fall damage took a fair bit of damage there but at least we ended up bouncing off of the bed now let's see if i can hook there we go mind all of the villagers we have another iron golem down here as well and we have at least multiplied the kelp to the point where when i plant this again we should have no problem growing it a little bit further okay there we go that's all made up now and we can figure out where exactly the beds are going to go up here we're actually going to set these a different way around to the way we've had them in previous iron farms in that we're going to have the beds facing this way and around this we're going to be providing a protective barrier of slabs to make sure that once the villagers are in place here there are no ways in which they are going to walk off these beds because typically they will end up getting up into this space here thanks to the fact that villagers now try and get out of the foot of each bed and this will typically put them all in this space and then they'll start to spread out because entity collision will take effect and we want to make sure that they only have a space here through which they're going to be seeing a zombie i'm going to coat the tops of these slabs in carpet since they are bottom half slabs and that is for good reason because the villager's eye line needs to be able to see the zombie at a certain angle i've been working on this farm in a creative testing world and it's actually worked out pretty well so far as long as the villagers are able to get some sleep now an interesting change that's happened in minecraft 116 is that villagers actually no longer need to work in order to produce an iron golem they just need to sleep so we don't even need to have a workstation blocks up here and the villagers can be unemployed they could probably even be nitwits Either way, we should get iron golems start to spawn up here once they are in view of a zombie. The next step is to go four blocks out from the end of this bed. One, two, three, four. And on the fifth block out, you want to place a composter. And that is where a zombie is going to be sitting once we've managed to get one to line up into the composter, which we're going to do in a second or two. That is going to be kind of crucial to this whole design. And having a block above it here is going to mean something kind of significant because the zombie is going to be standing in this composter and its eye line should always be scanning over here looking at the villagers however the villagers may not be able to see the zombie 100 percent of the time because they will typically be standing 
on top of one of these beds. The only time the villagers are going to be able to see the zombie guaranteed is when they lay in these beds to go to sleep for the night, which each of them should be able to do once they're in position up here. We're going to take out these blocks in between the villagers and the zombie, of course. So the zombie is going to be standing suspended in this cauldron and the villagers are going to be standing over here with no blocks in between them and the zombie. And they should just mill around inside of here, producing an iron golem on any nearby solid blocks, which as per usual, are going to be a platform above here which will start spawning iron golems. Then, redirecting it off with a water stream, the golems should fall down at the moment into the void, but once we figure out exactly where they're going to be falling, we should be able to catch them in a trap that's going to lead them to that soul campfire. Of course, our next step here is going to be A, to spawn a zombie, and then B, to get the zombie into this composter, which is going to be easier said than done, but I have faith that we can make it work. The idea here is that we're going to be setting up a spawning platform over there in the darkness and we'll put a trap door on top of the cauldron so it feels like the zombie can get to us. <laughs> Once the zombie spawns over here, it should try and walk towards us because it will see this trap door as a transparent block and it should hopefully get up here and into the cauldron. We are going to block off this area above the zombie's head to make sure it cannot get up onto this block and track towards me, but it should hopefully get into the cauldron, at which point we can put a block over its head and we can keep it in here for the foreseeable future. But this is why I brought a powerful bow and a set of arrows with me because this could go horribly wrong in a second. So let me see if I can get behind here, step back a few blocks and hopefully we will get a zombie spawning at the end of this platform. Okay, we have a zombie. This is our first test. It's taken a while for him to get here. Looks like he is trying to get in the composter though. All right, he's in. He's in the composter now and he is holding an item, which is great. All I should need to do is try and get a slab above his head, for which I will definitely need to craft up an oak slab like so. And let's see if we can get this in while he is... Oh, come on. Yes, there we go. All right, I think right there our zombie is in. That was pretty painless, actually. That really did not take all that long at all. So this zombie should now be able to see any villagers that are in this area and the villagers will be able to see the zombie if they are standing on the beds. However, if we put a block there, that should block the villagers sight lines to the zombie because the villagers will start to look around horizontally and they won't see the body of the zombie. They'll only start to get worried about it when they are in the beds because the beds will actually kind of <laughs> drop them down so that their eye lines are level with the zombie. Now I guess I just have to get around the zombie and deal with all of these other mobs that have decided to spawn over there in the meantime, but that shouldn't be a huge problem. Just got to make sure I go around the reach of the zombie because zombies do have quite the reach and they could potentially knock me off into the void if I'm not careful. I'll place a few more torches over here just to make sure that this whole area is lit up and we don't get any spawns. In the meantime, perfect. Okay, now let's <laughs> knock out the rest of these bridge blocks. I was very, very lucky that that zombie is one that holds items, though. Otherwise, we could have been here for a lot longer. The next step is to build this 5x5 platform of bottom half slabs with a row of fence gates around the outside. And what this is going to do is prevent the iron golem from moving off the front of the platform. Instead, the water is going to push it towards the back corner of the platform where it's going to drop off right now into the void, but then ultimately into an area that's going to contain the soul campfire. And I'm going to leave one block out of this here just so I can place that when I'm on my way out. And I'm going to temporarily place a fence there to attach the fence gates to, which I've had to make out of spruce wood because I was running low on oak. But basically, we're going to have to remove that fence gate there because the iron golem can get caught on this transition between the fence and the fence gate. Once the fence gates are open, the iron golem can be pushed through, but the water will be held back. And now this is the somewhat tricky part where we have to place a water source flowing across these slabs. You could make some of these full blocks if you wanted to, but like I said, I'm a little bit wary of blocking the zombies field of view until we want to. So I'm going to take out this slab here, replace that with a fence gate. I'm going to place a slab there and waterlog it. There we go. And now when we break that slab, the water will still flow in that direction and it should flow so that the iron golem leaves the platform. Looks like maybe when I tested this, I made it five by four instead of five by five. So maybe we should take out that last section there. 
Okay, we'll do the same thing again. We'll place a slab there. We'll waterlog the slab. Hopefully all the water should flow to that corner. Fantastic. Okay, and underneath that corner is where we're going to be building the fire pit that's going to contain the campfire that will be cooking these iron golems and reducing them into iron scrap. And like I said, for the moment, we are going to be placing a block here, basically directly underneath that fence post, and that's going to limit the line of sight of the zombie from the villagers. Once the villagers are in here, standing on top of these beds, for whatever reason, their horizontal field of view will not detect the zombie, and they should be able to go to sleep during the night, at which point they'll become frightened and they'll get right out of bed again, ready to summon some more iron golems. Last of all, I'm going to knock out these bone blocks underneath the beds, because I have a feeling they might still affect the villagers' positioning when they wake up, in the morning, I need to add this slab back in that I've been breaking every time I need to get into or out of this contraption. And we'll add the carpet back onto that slab at the front. There we go. Okay. Now all I need to do is convince some villagers to get up here into these beds. And that's going to be a little bit tricky to do with the zombie right there. But I have a feeling the zombie's line of sight might be enough blocked off that they will willingly get into the beds in this area. It's always a little difficult wrangling villagers though, so we might just try and drop them in from the top using a water stream. So let me hop on down here. Whoa! <laughs> always take a lot of full damage at that point. But then we should be able to open this up and see if a couple of our villagers wander in. Right now, they are all making their way to their beds, but if I break a couple of these out of their beds like so, I wonder if they'll start trying to pathfind to the beds up there or if they'll consider them a little bit too far away. Either way, I should just be able to try and push them in, and hopefully we'll be able to get more than a couple of them into this area here. Wrangling villagers without minecarts is always one of the hardest parts of this project, but nope, looks like he's walking towards the water at least, and shoof, there we go. He's made it up there. Now let's see what he does when he reaches the top of this column. Looks like he's definitely imprinted himself on one of the beds, which means he should be stuck in there for good right about now. Excellent. And it looks like the bed has had the intended effect. He's gotten out of bed immediately because he realizes the zombie is there. So that's good news for us. Back down to the bottom of the world. And wow, that guy did not mind me jumping on his face, I guess. <laughs> for attempt number two, let's take this guy out of his bed. Let's pop another bed over here as we did before. His friend over here has decided to take the bait. We're going to block him in, break the bed again, and once again, you have nowhere to go but the water stream. Once he gets up to the top of the platform, he should pick another one of those beds as well. And finally, villager number three, come on down. This is a little bit awkward, but we are three for three right now. Let's follow this guy up and make sure we take out those bone blocks at the very top here and hopefully... We should be in business with our iron farm. Okay, those green particles mean he has paired with one of the beds. We can remove this block, this block, this block, and the adjacent blocks. And hopefully we should start to see some iron golems spawning in the water over there. Yes, we've done it. You see that? We've got an iron golem spawning and it's falling into the void now and hopefully we should start to see more iron golems spawning in this space as with most iron farms this is going to take a second or two to warm up to full capacity the villagers need to sleep they need to make sure they wake up again in the morning and hopefully they should try and sleep throughout the night even though the zombie is over there we should start to see them getting up in the morning and spreading out from this central block here and we should start to see iron golems pouring out of this farm we will only need a few at a time to start off with of course because we only need a small supply of iron to really get going but it's going to be great to have an iron farm in this world at long last so let's go and set up the last stage of the farm which is going to be a platform down here to collect the iron thanks to a soul campfire and we're aiming for that back right corner there, which seems to be where the iron golems will fall out of the farm. Now I'm making this platform three blocks wide out of bottom half slabs, and I'm basically going to go until an iron golem falls on me, or near enough, because that is the point at which we need to start making the collection area for this farm. And it's there, more or less there. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is set up a little spruce plank box here that's going to have the soul campfire in the middle of it and water flowing around it because the soul campfire will be able to sit in the middle of a water stream without it going out unless water flows directly over the top of it and so what we're going to do is have the golems sit on top of the soul campfire as they take damage and then once they're done taking damage the water should pick up the iron ingots and transport them into a hopper which I guess is going to output somewhere around here. <laughs> Here's a friend! <laughs> Look who just dropped in! Alright, that looks like it's pretty much perfect 
for what I want, and we're going to have to set up a floor for them here. That, unfortunately, you are going to have to go into the void. We're going to place a 3x3 three three of spruce planks here, and the soul campfire is going to go dead in the middle like that. And I say dead in the middle, it definitely means dead in the middle for these iron golems, unfortunately. And there we go! One just dropped in and is now dying on the soul campfire. The idea here is that we will place a water bucket there which should flow around the outside of the soul campfire. Once I've built up the spruce plank wall around the sides here, we should be able to just nudge this guy back in. And the pit is going to be too large for him to get out of. He's jumping up and down right now, but once he ends up taking fatal damage, the iron ingots should just drop straight into that hopper, or if they fly out in a different direction, they will be carried into the hopper by the water stream. And look, we've got another one that dropped in before that one was even done dying, which means that the villagers up there are no longer seeing the iron golems as they drop down, which means they should produce them pretty efficiently every time. Now all I'll have to do is just put a row of slabs around the outside here to make sure this box is spawn-proof and... Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're in business. We have an iron farm all set up now. And yep, our first iron and our first poppies are in the chest. I've left a slab above the chest here just to make sure it can still be opened, but there we go. Three more iron ingots just came in, and even though it is now raining, it's also raining iron. Folks, that's going to be it for this episode of Skyblock 116. I do hope you've enjoyed a look at building an iron farm with the new 116.2 mechanics. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.